Okay, so we are on to section 8.3, part 1. This one's all about trigonometric ratios, or trig ratios. You will know what trig ratios are, you just might not have heard of it in this term before. So what are our purposes for today? We're going to look at trig ratios, and how does that relate to the unit circle that we've been looking at already. We're going to look at reciprocal trig ratios, so it's something to the power of negative 1. And we're going to learn how to get some exact answers from these trig ratios. So what are trig ratios? Well, if you take a look at this unit circle here, again, you'll see the hypotenuse of this little triangle is 1. So therefore, you know that the radius of this unit circle is 1. And the point that is on the edge of this circle is at point x, y. x meaning the x value, y meaning the y value. So if we were to look at this, and we we're to look at sine theta, so sine theta is one of the trig ratios. Trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, and we're going to get in cosecant, secant, and uh, cotangent today as well. So if we're looking at sine theta in this case, it's opposite over hypotenuse. For the unit circle, the opposite, if you look at that triangle, is y, and the hypotenuse is 1. So therefore, sine theta is 1. And I could do the same thing with cosine, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. It's just x. This is fairly convenient. How about tan theta? Opposite over adjacent. This is y over x. Now, in terms of sine and cosine, you've probably seen this before. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. You could use both of these. So whether it's y or it's x, it's, it's the same thing. So therefore, for the unit circle, we have this. This is a nice little summary of all of this put together. And I will refer to this a few times in the next couple sections. Note that the point on the edge, I can refer to this point as point x, y, or I can now refer to it as point cos theta, sine theta, just so you know with that. So let's look at some examples with this. So if theta is 1.28, then what is this point x, y? Well, I just need to solve for what x is and what y is. So here's a little diagram what this would look like. Theta, again, being in standard position from the x-axis all the way to my terminal arm. So x is cos theta. So we just take cos theta, you get the x point. y is sine theta. You can get the y point. So therefore, this is my point. Pretty straightforward. Just solve for x and y, you're good to go. And notice here, this is in radians because there's no degree sign. In this case, I didn't put uh, 1.28 to the power of capital R because if there's no degree, just assume it's radians. So let's look at some reciprocals. So there's something called a cosecant represented by CSC. And this is 1 divided by sine theta. There's also another one called secant, which is 1 over cos. And then a cotangent, which is 1 over tangent. If you're confused as to uh, which one's which, I always get cosecant and secant mixed up. What you could do is look at the first letter. So cosecant starts with a C, and it represents sine. Secant has an S. It represents 1 over cos. So the first letters just switch, C and S, and then S and C. That's one way you can remember that. At least that's how I remember it. So let's look at some more examples here. So given this point, 5 over 13 is your X value, and negative 12 over 13 is your Y, we want to know what are all the trig ratios, meaning sine, cosine, tangent, and secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So I could sketch this. Here's what it would look like. We're in quadrant four. And we could just start plugging some numbers in. So sine theta, that's just what is your y value. Cos theta is the x value. Tan theta is your y divided by x. So you can simplify that. And then the inverse ratios are just each of these flipped. So cosecant is 1 over sine theta, so you just flip your sine theta 
the numerator becomes a denominator, denominator becomes a numerator. Secant, same thing, take your cosine theta and flip that. And cotangent, take your tangent and flip that. So once you have the original three um, ratios, the other three are not too bad. Now we want to learn how to get some exact answers. So remember this, this is going to come in, in uh, this is going to be very handy once we are trying to solve for exact answers. So if we want to get, what is the exact answer for sine 4 pi over 3? So what we would do, anytime I'm looking for exact values, this is from your unit circle. So you'd go and you look, okay, where is angle 4 pi over 3? So here you go, it's in quadrant 3. And from this, we know sine theta equals the y value. So you look at this angle, and what's the y value? Negative root 3 over 2. Not too bad. Now let's try a different one. Now we want cosecant 7 pi over 4. So we look, 7 pi over 4 is at quadrant 4 here. Now with cosecant, the x and the y value aren't specifically related to cosecant. They're related to sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I would do is I would look at what is sine of this, because cosecant is 1 over sine theta. Sine is the y value, so we take the y value, and then we take the reciprocal of this to get negative 2 over root 2. So that's going to be your value for cosecant, 7 pi over 4. Do another one. How about cotangent? So negative 17 pi over 6. Now wait a minute, that's not on your unit circle, so you need to figure out where that is. This one, you're actually going to do a full rotation, because you can add 2 pi to this, and then you'd figure out the rest. So it's, it's uh, once you add 2 pi onto that, you'd get negative 5 pi over 6, which relates to this point here. Now cotangent is just the inverse of tangent. So I take cos theta over sine theta, which is just x over y. So you take the x value divided by the y value, simplify, you get root 3. Again, tan 5 theta over 2. Where's my 5 theta over 2? This is just at 90 degrees. Again, you can subtract 2 pi from this and you're left with pi over 2. So we're completely vertical here. Tan theta is sine over cos. So this is y over x, which gives you 1 over 0. So this is actually undefined. So you have an undefined term with tangent. And you're going to have that every once in a while. You cannot divide by 0, so you're going to get some undefined terms with tangents and cotangents. So that's the end. That's the end of this section. It's not too bad. You're going to need to get really familiar with that unit circle that we did last section so that you can be able to do this because you're going to have to get really quick at solving things with the unit circle. Okay, I'm excited about this next random fact for the lesson. It's, um, well, you'll see once I say it. It's going to be an interesting one. Did you know, and I don't know how they tested this, but apparently they did. Did you know that on average, a person will swallow seven spiders while they're sleeping in a year? Yep, don't know how they tested that. If they just filmed someone for a year or a bunch of people for a year and saw how many spiders they ate while they slept, I don't know. And, and what kind of spiders are we talking about? Are we talking about tiny ones? Are we talking about like bigger ones? I don't know. So just think about that as you're sleeping or going to bed. That's, that's a lovely thought for you to have. Hopefully you're not watching this video right before you go to sleep and have nightmares. Did they just film people for a year? But that was my hands. <laughs> that was a weird step. Um, 